Ursus Phileas, Ursus Phileas, followed by more Ursus, Fe Ursus Facius. I thought Sherry was kidding when she said 99% of the bones recovered were cave bear. Oh no. At least it makes guessing which animal the bone belongs to much easier. There you are, Shoji. Man, I thought we were never going to be friends again because of the whole wrong tent incident. I looked for you forever last time. Thank goodness. Okay, things seem to be back to normal. I was in the lab, sitting next to Shoji while I rummaged through the plastic bag I had selected. Yep, I can feign being an expert on this stuff. Hey, Melissa, what animal does this hoof belong to? Cave bear. Melissa, this horn. Hmm, let me think. Cave bear. <laughs> Shoji glanced at his document and thought as if he wanted to say something but couldn't decide. No, wait. I tilted my head, hoping my smile would encourage him to speak up. After a moment, he shyly muttered. Um, Melissa, what about these fossilized feathers? What species is this? Cave bear, of course, didn't you know? They were capable of flight. And that's why you find them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we shared a final chuckle since the joke had gotten old by then and returned to our tasks. A small gasp caught my attention and I glanced up to see flakes from a cracked canine tooth fall into the paper towel. Huh. Shoji looked horrified and hastily placed the toothbrush down to examine the damage. It was a canine that belonged to a... What else? Cave bear with a giant fracture that ran from part of the tooth to the end of the root. It was drenched in water with some smears of dirt still left on it. <clears throat> Yikes, the condition's bad. It didn't appear that fragile when I washed it. He picked up the enamel pieces and sighed. Oh, did I mess up somewhere? Ah, this is, eh, here we go. Cause we only had these two before. How long was it submerged in water? How long did you wash it for? Um, just a few minutes? I sort of swirled it around in the water for a bit. Ah, now I see. I think you used too much water. It's saturated and causing the tooth to flake, since there's a big crack in it and everything. Maybe let it dry more before cleaning it? You have to be super careful with it now, though, because of the excess water. I had no idea. I think Hendrick, Hen Hendrick, I think Hendrick went over it, but it's a lot to take in. He nodded in agreement. Aw. Thanks for that. I'll keep it in mind from now on. It's no problem. This is stuff I need to memorize anyway. I'm still learning, but I'll be happy to help if you have any questions. <laughs> Starting to sound like Hendrick. I'd appreciate it. The excavation team is always busy, and I feel like I'm bothering them. And Professor DuPont scares me. Me too. He's friendly, but he can get pretty intimidating when it comes to structure and doing things right. I hope I don't screw up too majorly here. <laughs> this gets me wondering, though. Because Shoji walks in when I'm getting my, um... Oh, what's the expression I'm looking for? It's not tearing down. But anyway, when DuPont is, like, yelling at Melissa for finding a burnt flint in her tomasage. Wonder if Shoji will like stick around or if he'll like run away still. A few days ago one of the students mixed up her buckets. DuPont's lecture echoed throughout the whole cave for 20 minutes. It was really nerve-wracking. I felt bad for her. Whoa, I must have had my earbuds in since I didn't hear any of that. I guess ignorance is bliss. Let's pray for a smooth dig where we don't discover a Neanderthal tooth in our wet screen. At least I don't have to worry about that. Oh? Hey, we're succeeding finally in something. Oh boy, here we go again. Wait, seriously? How did I end up here? I skidded to a halt to get a better idea of my location. My morning jog had been extended way longer than I'd intended. Oh, I'll try this off-road, I said. I won't get lost, I said. The hoodie around my waist had gotten loose, and I retied the sleeves while I walked briskly along the street. I was definitely high up. Beside me was a steep slope, and I knew the cave was located somewhere below. It's already past eight. I should have found my way back like twenty minutes ago. 
I sauntered closer to the slope and peered down, wondering if I could find a shortcut. No way! That's the cave down there! It was unmistakable. There was a protruding shed half hidden in the rock, and I could see the worn path. I did not see any trail that ascended down. Not without weaving through the bushes and trees, anyway. If I backtracked, I would be horribly late. What to do, what to do... Just go for it, girl. I really didn't have a choice in the matter, did I? I took one precise step to secure my footing before launching myself, then half slipped, half ran down the slope. Narrowly dodging trees, I stumbled and ended up bursting through a thicket of bushes. Do all these bushes have thorns? What is this? I shielded my face as I ducked under the lower branches. As the walkway came into view, I grabbed a tree trunk to stop my momentum, huffing and puffing heavily from my detour. <sighs> Hey. <laughs> Shoji watched me stagger into the wet screening room, all scratched, with leaves stuck to me everywhere. Melissa, are you okay? I lowered one hand to a bent knee as I caught my breath. <sighs> Straightening up, I mustered a weak smile while I wiped the front of my shirt. <laughs> yeah, the uh, sandbag relic switch didn't work out, and I got chased by a boulder on the way down. <laughs> Maybe you should consider another career outside of archaeology, Laura Derrick. <laughs> I untied my hoodie, throwing it on while I walked over to the stack of buckets. Shoji promptly offered the bucket he was carrying, which already had all the tools and knee pads stuffed inside. Aww. Shoji, are you sure? This is new. <laughs> I'm positive. Th think of it as a reward for surviving the level. Aww. He's been so kind so soon! I wasn't expecting it! His gesture of kindness was sweet, and it did spare me a few minutes of scrambling to get everything organized. Merci, merci! I'll return the favor somehow. He bashfully glanced away as he picked up a new bucket. You already did when you held me out with the tooth at the lab before. Oh, right. So, um, thank you for that. Aw, oh, he's so cute! Oh, you're so cute, Shoji. When I climbed down the last ladder, I was surprised to find the excavation spot deserted. Oh right, Kyler's at the lab. It only took a quick survey to see that he was nearly done with his first 25 centimeter intervals. He clearly works fast. I wonder if I'll pick up speed. The catchy tunes of jazz played through my earbuds while I concentrated on excavating. I wiped the sweat off my forehead, wondering why I was baking in a chilly place. Eyeing the two heat lamps angled toward the square, I was certain they weren't the cause. Shivering, I rubbed the back of my head and shrugged my shoulders. It can't be because of the jog. That was hours ago. I continued to scrape dirt from under a rock. However, the blade trembled and my movements became shaky. I dropped the tool as dread settled in. Crap. I shoved my hands into my pockets, searching for the hard candies I had on me whenever my blood sugar ran low. I froze when I realized they were empty and I frantically patted myself down. I always carried emergency rations on me. How could... Oh no. They must have fallen out of my pocket when I slid down the slope. This is bad. Not wasting time, I turned for the exit. My heart rate soared, whether from the hypoglycemia or from the distress, I wasn't sure. Or a combination of the two. I scurried up the ladder with a burst of adrenaline, but by the time I reached the next one, my movements were clumsy. Oh, I continued, not wanting to slip. Should I alert someone? Who would know English? My diabetic bag. It would be in the tent. Since I jogged straight to the cave, I skipped breakfast and failed to pick it up, too. I panicked, reflecting on my routine and how important it was to keep it rigid. Now I was paying for it. Melissa? A timid voice jolted me out of my inner rambles. I still clung to the ladder. Well, more like heavily leaned on it and didn't budge. Shoji, you wouldn't happen to have something sweet on you right now. A candy bar, or... No, why? Are you hungry? I hoisted myself up another step, my hand clinging to the railing of the catwalk. It was best to be frank before confusion symptoms settled in and it became difficult to speak. Shoji, don't panic, but I'm feeling low. I'm type 1 diabetic, and I need sugar now. He glanced at my medical bracelet. I felt guilty scaring him like that. However, he did not get as alarmed as I expected. Or maybe he was better at hiding it. Should I get you something? No, it's better if I get to the museum before. 
I trailed off, not wanting to bring up the possibi possibly possibility of seizures or fainting. However, the dangerous implications lingered, and we both walked down the alley, alley to the exit. By the time I was outside, I started to stagger. Shoji darted an arm out and held me close to him. S sorry No, it's fine. No, it wasn't fine, but we had to keep going, and each step felt cumbersome. My body leaned on him heavily, and I forced myself to remain upright the best I could. I'm sorry. I would carry you, but the path is uneven, and I don't want to drop you. We're almost there. Just another step. I didn't know how, but we made it to the kitchen area. While Shoji supported me, I heard DeAndre and Kyler snapping at each other behind the counter. The words were in French, but even I could tell it wasn't friendly banter. Shoji tried to address the other two repeatedly. Excusez-moi. Um, pouvez tu m'aider? When it proved futile, Shoji took a step forward but stopped to steady me. He was torn between getting their attention and leaving me to raid the kitchen. Before I could encourage him to go on. Oh, for... Melissa, forgive me. What? With both arms, he scooped me up effortlessly. Ah! I let out a shrill yelp, which obviously caused quite a sight. Kyler! DeAndre! Melissa Fay de la Hypoglycemie! Elle va soin de quelque chose de sucre! Quoi? <laughs> DeAndre and Kyler exchanged shocked glances. Kyler went to the fridge with a cup in hand. Shoji walked over to the benches and set me down gingerly, his arm not leaving my back. So strong. DeAndre tried to rush over, but Kyler barked out something harsh. DeAndre retreated a few steps, his fist clenched tightly. Oh, hello. I trembled violently as Kyler knelt down and futilely tried to place the drink in my hand. My fingers quivered, so he held them to prevent further shaking, and helped lift the overflowing cup to my lips. The sweetness of apple juice filled my mouth and I took tiny sips. Amidst all this, I could hear a worried female voice, followed by Hendrik and Shoji exchanging dialogue in French. No one barraged me with questions. While my condition improved, Kyler removed his grip and Shoji inched farther down the bench to give me more space. I licked my lips and wiped my mouth with an arm as I mumbled behind my knuckles. <sighs> Merci beaucoup. My amount of gratitude could not be expressed in just two words, but I hope they could sense the heartfelt emotion behind them. How are you feeling? Much better. I admit it's been a while since I've had an episode like that. What was that exactly? You looked as if you were going to pass out right then and there. Don't pester her with questions. She's still recovering. The hell, man. Who died and made you boss? Um, please calm down. The tension dissolved and the three looked at me worryingly. I cradled the cup in my lap as I formulated an answer. I'm okay now. Honest. Hey, Boo, do you want to stay with me? I turned to Shoji, who still appeared shaken from the whole event. Then again, he did support me on the way here. Shoji, is it okay if I ask you to stay a little longer? DeAndre and Kyler both have cooking duty, and I don't want to be alone. I can do that. Sounds good. Take it easy, Mel. Don't push yourself. Thanks, guys. Shoji sat down on the bench, leaving ample distance between us. He averted his eyes as he pressed his pointer fingers together. Whenever his gaze met mine, he hastily looked back down. It's okay, Shoji. No need to be tense. It's just me. R right Actually, could you do me a big favor? I'm really sorry to ask you this since you've done so much already. I don't mind. Could you fetch my diabetic bag from my tent? It's solid green and should be on top of my sleeping bag. Think of it as a reward for completing an escort mission. <laughs> it's so cute! They just keep comparing things to games. I love it. <laughs> he stood up and disappeared around the building. I took another sip, careful not to consume too much sugar. Shoji returned and I placed the cup on the table before I unzipped the bag. I took out the glucose meter and lancet device, then swung my legs around so I faced the table. Although I was preoccupied for a few minutes, I heard Shoji take deep breaths to calm down. I knew his collected demeanor back at the cave was simply a front. Aww. Um. 
After adjusting his glasses, he gripped the bench edge with his fingers, one knee bouncing nervously. Once I was finished, I returned the items to my bag. I wanted to apologize again for uh, suddenly picking you up. I was panicking and didn't know what to do. Uh, ooh, what should I do? Rather heroic? Or you did what you had to do. I feel like this would embarrass him to no end and I don't want to do that. Maybe there was a better alternative, but in the end it caught the other's attention, right? Don't be so hard on yourself. You were in a difficult predicament. It was suddenly thrust on you, and I doubt you've experienced a similar situation before. No, I've never helped someone who needed medical attention before. Uh, I mean, I have, but it wasn't urgent or anything. An awkward silence followed before he spoke up again. His voice was even softer than before. Um, how serious was it? Would something have happened if you hadn't made it down here in time? Well, um, let's just say I'm not exaggerating when I say that you basically saved my life. I really, really, really owe you one, Shoji. I can't thank you enough. I did put you on the spot earlier in the cave, so thanks for being brave for me. His face went bright red and he stammered briefly as he avoided my gaze. I knew if I visibly panicked, it would have made the situation scarier for you. A anyway, I'm glad you're okay. Same. I admit I was already a little scared when... Oh. <gasps> a yawn interrupted our talk and I covered my mouth. Ugh, I'm tired. Well, no wonder. Maybe... It'd be best if you took it easy for the rest of the day. I can inform your teacher if you'd like. She's probably wondering where you are. She was at the cave? Near the back, helping Chantel. Ah, thanks Shoji, I'd appreciate it. The first year got up and briskly walked toward the pathway. The first year? I buried my head in my hands, feeling guilty that I relied on Shoji this heavily. He was at least two years younger than me. I surmised, anyway. Dost thou assumeth too much, Melissa? Took it all in without complaint. Talk about reliable. There you are! Sorry about not finding you. I needed to get my glucose levels back to normal first. No, I understand. Do you know what caused it? I didn't see you at breakfast. I... got lost. Not only did I jog longer than I intended, but I also skipped a meal. This made me sound more and more irresponsible as I went on and I lost my emergency candy. Please don't fail me. I wouldn't deduct marks for this. Melissa, I think you should get some rest. Let's focus on getting your meal schedule back on track. Right. However, I'd like to talk to you about this later. My shoulders pricked and I could only stammer in agreement. What will she bring up anyway? I hope it's not about monitoring me. Oh no. And we went back to the cave after that. And we failed because we just had an episode. Oh, thank goodness. Succeeding at finding bunny pictures. Woohoo! I know you're capable, but what happened doesn't sit well with me. You'll be alone all weekend, and none of us are staying in Kareem. If you'd like, you can stay with Helena and me. I held in a groan. If it was only one night, I would be fine with it. However, I felt it would be an inconvenience if I roomed there for three nights. Moreover, I wasn't sure if I would enjoy spending time there, with a language barrier and age gap. I promise I'll monitor myself extra carefully over the weekend. I can set an alarm to wake myself up to check my glucose levels. I can leave food next to my bed. I can do a lot of things. I know you feel it hinders your independence, but you're my only student on this field trip. It's my responsibility to guarantee your safety and well-being. I want this to be a wonderful experience. Maybe I should cancel my plans and stay here just in case. Uh, at that moment, the office chair swiveled around and Hendrik casually veered from his laptop. If it's not a problem, I could stay. It'd be no trouble, and I'd catch up on my work too. Oh, would you? You're a godsend, Hendrik. Relieved, Sherry exhaled with a hand on her chest. Huh. 
from the tone from her tone of voice. It was like the choice was already made without my input. She must have known him for a long time to place that much trust in him. Of course, Melissa has the final say. Don't feel pressure to say yes because I offered. You know yourself best, and I respect your decision. My eyes darted between Sherry and Hendrick, one obviously more distraught than the other. I know myself best, huh? Then... I'm going to decline again, because we have a conversation with Shoji, I think, over our 3DP. Thank you, Hendrick, but I know I'll be okay on my own. He gave an understanding nod and glanced over to gauge Sherry's reaction. Huh. If you strongly believe that, Melissa, then I'll comply. However, Hendrick does live the closest. I think. Where are you now? Just outside of Namir. I'm 15 minutes away by truck. 10 if I rush. You wouldn't mind being in emergency contact, would you? Hendrick exchanged a knowing glance with me and I gave him a strained smile. We silently agreed her concerns were a tad overbearing. I'll jot my cell number down right now. He swiveled in his seat as he turned to his desk once again to grab a pen. We heard a light rap on the doorframe. Augustan walked through the entrance, announcing that he had locked everything up save the back and front door. All done. Now has the discussion been settled? Augustan had been in the same room briefly when Sherry first addressed me. Therefore, he had the gist of the situation. It has. The routine will stay the same, and Melissa will remain here over the weekend. I'll be fine. I already talked it over, and Hendrick will be in emergency contact since he lives close by. Then we will see you on Monday, Melissa. Don't push yourself too hard. A tap on the table drew my attention, and I saw slanted writing on paper. Hendrick closed his laptop and pulled the plug. I'll leave my number here. Awesome, thanks. Once their belongings were sorted, the trio filed out, and I followed to give them a proper goodbye. After they left, I closed the front door and retreated back into the laboratory, wondering what to do for the rest of the evening. Get freaked out by noises. Oh jeez, what was that? The stairs creaked, as if someone had stepped on the bottom step. Slowly the creaks got closer and slower, and then... stopped. I rolled over and peered at the exit, half expecting someone to be standing there. Wind rattled through the cracks in the roof, creating a high-pitched whistle. I pulled the sleeping bag over me, trying not to whimper. I cranked up my 3DP and inserted the earbuds, hoping to forget the scary sounds. Luckily, the Wi-Fi was still on and I connected my handheld. A few of my friends were online, playing various games, including an unfamiliar avatar. Oh yeah, we exchanged friend codes recently. Wait, Shoji is still awake? Using the touchscreen, I navigated to the messaging system that came with the handheld and decided to contact him. It was clunky without a keyboard, but I needed someone to talk to more than playing a game. Hmm, how to greet him. This was the best out of the three, I think. Oh hey, we're both on. Hello. Aha. Hello. Ah. How are you? It's pretty late. What are you doing up? Nothing much, really. Internet browsing, listening to music, that type of thing. You? Try not to cry. <laughs> the museum sounds so scary at night, and I'm practically huddled under the covers. Can you keep talking to me until I fall asleep, please? Sure. Do you have access to your laptop? It'll be easier to talk that way. The touchscreen on these things are painfully slow. Yeah, what messengers do you use? I'm Mysophronia Mel on WeChat together. Perfect. I'll add you so you know who I am in a minute. See you then. I shut my handheld and poked my head out of the sleeping bag. Yanking my earbuds out, I slipped out from the covers. Grabbing my laptop, I set it on the floor beside my air mattress, making sure the cord wasn't strained against the outlet. Resting on my stomach, I impatiently logged in and was relieved to find a notification. Shoji, not Shoda, has added you. Yay! Thanks. This will help me forget all of the horror movie noises. Happy to help, huh? So you stay at the cave side alone? Yeah, Sherry's at her friend's place. A fellow student was supposed to come, but family emergency and stuff. What's with the name? People mistake you a lot? Ah, uh, yes, and it's annoying. What about yours? What's a Sophronia? It's based on my favorite swing song. I love it. When I hear it, I want to rock around the clock and jump, jive, and wail, and all that jazz. <laughs> 
you can say, I dig swing. <laughs> but We've been hanging around Hendrik for too long. Uh, are you feeling less scared now? Is there anything else I could do? Let's see. Let's talk, finally. Just talking is good. I admit I hate being alone. Hope it's not too demanding. It's not. I hope I'm not boring or anything, though. I've never been good with conversations. I couldn't argue with that. <laughs> Shoji seemed more open now that we weren't face to face. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what are you planning to do this weekend anyway? Enjoying the summer? Aside from no school, it doesn't feel that different to me. <laughs> Probably help around my mom's shop as always. Eh? Your family has a shop? What does she do? Um, she has a vintage electronic shop specializing in obsolete stuff. Old TVs, 80s consoles, tape decks. Business isn't amazing. It's more of a hobby than for income, but there aren't many people out there that can still also repair old electronics. She provides repair services and sometimes even gets contacted online. I handle all the shipping and fiddle around with the older computers. I'm better with the newer stuff though. I used to do more, but she hired slash trained some other people now so I can focus on school. Wow, that's pretty neat. <laughs> what does your dad do? Does he help out with repairs? Oh no. If he did, he'd bust everything in the shop, and mom would throw portable cassette players at his head or something. Oh good. I'm so glad that his dad's still alive. I thought he was going to be like, uh, yeah, I don't have a dad. <laughs> he works at the Embassy of Japan here to promote Belgian-Japanese relations. <laughs> Whoa, seriously? And now the piece has fallen into place. How did they meet, anyway? Dad is really enthusiastic about old consoles, like the Famous system, but has awful bad luck with electronics. Just him touching them renders them useless. So when it broke here, well, he met my mom and yeah. Aww, that's so adorable. And it also explains your gaming knowledge. I've always been surrounded by electronics. Um, you? I mean, you play games. Mom bought me one of those old clunky handhelds to keep me preoccupied during road trips. Been gaming since. <laughs> you travel a lot? Mostly to Mexico or Arizona. We got extended family there and my family hates planes. Belgium is my first European country. My first trip off the continent. Congrats, you traveled all the way here to dig in some dirt. At least it's European dirt. <laughs> you know, you're sort of different online. I guess. <laughs> is that a bad thing? No. It's just I couldn't imagine us having the same type of conversation in person. True. <laughs> At least here I can read what I type and put more thought into it. I feel more comfortable. Shoji, you speak took the words right out of my mouth. That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> I am much more comfortable with online conversations than in person, and much more so than on the phone. If I had to list, like... My preferred way of conversing would be through online, then in person, then on the phone. <laughs> so, yeah, I love that I can, I don't have to reply right away. I can think about what I want to say and then read it and say, does that sound good? And then rewrite it if I don't feel comfortable with it. So, I feel you. I feel you so much, Shoji. There was a long, Shoji not Shoda is writing pause, and the notification appeared and disappeared repeatedly. Aw. I mean, I enjoyed talking to you in real life, too. I'm sorry if I ever felt awkward or said something odd. You're a kind person, and I was really happy when you introduced yourself. Truly. You don't have to worry so much. <laughs> it's just me. Anyway, I think I'm ready to pass out. I can barely watch the screen and my head hurts. 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 Hurts! <laughs> I guess that's what you get for staring at a bright light this late. Haha, <laughs> well, take care. <laughs> Hope your head feels better and hers less. <laughs> Shush, I'm the English speaker here. I wouldn't be surprised if your grammar is better than mine. Anyway, night. Thanks for keeping me company. Hug! Night. <laughs> I logged off, then shut the laptop before I curled up again. I was no longer aware of the noises and I fell into a deep sleep. Aw, Shoji, you helped her so much. That was so cute. Aw, I loved everything about that. 
That was way better than looking at bunny videos. Woohoo!